Hello. Welcome to Palmer Clay Swirling Techniques with Elena, presented by the Tiny Pandora Design Team. Today I'll be showing you several different techniques and just some hints and tricks that I've learned about the clay that I'm using. Here I'm showing you Cernet Pearl in, in Violet. And I'm going to show you just quickly how to leach this clay so that it'll be more cooperative for you because it can be very fresh, very sticky when you first take it out of the package. And um, I'm going to actually show you just exactly the consistency that it is when you take it out of the package right away. It's like kind of like bubble gum. And so as you know, it's Pretty difficult to get bubble gum to be the shape you want it. And uh, see, it's pretty sticky, pretty gooey. But it's really easily fixed. And um, if you look on Blue Bottle Tree, there are a lot of hints and tips about clay. I'm using one of them right here. But I don't um, put the clay through my pasta machine before leaching it. I take it straight out of the packet, put it between several sheets of, of uh, coffee paper so that it doesn't get on your clothes or your chair. So I put like about three sheets on each side and then put it in my chair <laughs> and sit on it. And you only need to sit on it for a few minutes. So I've sat on clay for a few minutes and I'm taking the paper off and showing you what it's like when you, once you've leached it. Okay, it's pretty well uh, leached. It's got the oil on the paper and it is pretty well stuck to that other sheet of paper. You know, from body weight and warmth, you can get that pretty stuck after just a few minutes. So what you want to do is just pull as much as you can off by hand and then I used um, a mega blade just to skim the rest of it off of there and put it in my little piece of clay so that I would have as much of it as possible to use. As we all know clay is a precious precious commodity to us crafters. If you're a polymer clay artist especially this last couple of years you know it is challenging to get clay and I don't like to waste it possible. So I've got it all there on my little piece and it is now the full stack. It's been leached. And I'm just going to kind of roll it back, reconstitute it a bit here. Get it back to being able to be used. And now you can see the consistency that it is after it's been leached. You know, it, it acts more like uh, regular clay that you're used to using that's not so fresh and gummy. It's got a, a more usable texture. Um, I'm showing you now Pardo Translucent. It's been said by many <clears throat> that this is the most translucent of the translucent clays. And what I have found with this is that it is um, really beautiful stuff. It's quite a different consistency than, than the Cernet, um, so you need to warm it up a little bit. As you can see, I have now taken a ball of my Pardo Translucent and started wrapping my snakes of Violet Cernet. And as I was saying about the Pardo, you want to Take off a little chunk, however much you need for your to for your project, and then I put it in one hand and, and I put it in my left hand and let it warm up for a little bit before I start trying to work with it. And that seems to be what you all you need to do. It doesn't need to be too too strenuous. And here I'm showing you that I'm using some of the Cernet Pearl Violet with gold leaf that I have applied to it. Um, the gold leaf is pretty unruly. As you can see, it's kind of all over my work surface. 
and um, I won't show you the wrangling that had to go into me making that that swirl bead get to where it is because it wants to fight you back when it has the gold leaf but I will tell you this it is worth it and it just takes a little bit of wrangling now what I'm doing here is swirling it with a snakes and swirls tool but it's been swirled several times as you can tell before I sh started showing you the footage and I didn't want to bore you guys to pieces with just looking at me endlessly swirling it because it wants to reject that swirling tool instead of letting it stick to it very well because of the foot the I'm sorry the leaf the gold leaf but it made a beautiful swirl I mean gorgeous I just had to kind of wrangle it several times where I picked the bead back up and I put it back in the center and I kept on swirling I like to swirl with one hand with the round um, the round snakes and swirls tool we have a round and a square that you get in the set um, if you only have a rectangle if you only have a round if you only have a square whatever you've got it's still the same technique I, I just try to apply like medium pressure and, and you can see the circles that I make as I'm swirling and then once I've got my bead as swirly as I want because I can see it through the clear tool I go ahead and press down on it now never fear there will be plenty more of me showing you me making a ball with snakes around it and swirling it in this video so even though you don't get to see it all of it right at the beginning um, I wanted to start off with one of the more um, challenging uh, swirls so that you could see that one first and also see the process of bleaching the clay and warming up the clay and getting it ready for making a swirl. So here's the swirl once I have compressed it with the snakes and swirls tool. Okay. And I'm just trying to kind of twirl it so that you can see the shimmer in the pearl clay and then the sparkle of the gold leaf. And I should mention that I do get my clay from Blueberry Beads and our Snakes and Swirls tools from TinyPandora.com. Now I am showing you Sculpey Primo, uh, actually Sculpey White Glitter Clay. And it's got two different colors that I mixed up with Cernet, both pearl colors um, that I made to make a candy color. And so I made a candy pink, candy red, mm -hmm. and I made snakes and applied them to another ball, a ball of, like I said, the Sculpey White Glitter. So I like to combine my clays. It just depends on what color it is, and, you know, I make them all work. Once you, you, you get to you, using these clays, you'll start to find out how much uh, conditioning they each need. And you kind of get them each to that level and then you can combine them pretty easily so the sculpey white glitter is really not difficult to condition um, and I find it's a lovely clay with really gorgeous sparkles in it and then of course the certain pearls are just my new favorite thing so I made those candy colors to make this swirl and then just showed you me swirling it and compressing it and again, you can see it. I, I want to tell you, though, a lot of people feel like they have to um, keep it at this perfect center point, um, never lift up off of their, um, you know, their, their swirling tool. Um, it, they think that if they have to start over, it's going to ruin it. I find none of that is, is actually the case for me. Um, I... I start over as many times as I have to. I move it around as much as I need to. Um, as my mom likes to say, the clay is not the boss of you. So if it's not cooperating, try, try again. Um, you know, obviously there are times when you know that it's it is not going to work. But most of the time, I find that they that these swirls are never a total loss. You can usually get them back going. Sometimes all it takes is kind of reforming it back into a ball. And then starting over, 
because uh, not not like starting over as in you completely form it into a ball like roll it in your hand again like mix up your clay completely but rather more gingerly pick it up and shape it into a ball with the same dimensions that you had before before it started to get off the rails. Now you still want to maintain your little crisscrosses that you make with your snakes because that's how you get your swirls to look the way that they look. The finished product that most people are trying to go for with a swirl. I hope all of this is making sense. It is <laughs> late in the evening so I'm pretty tired but I wanted to make sure that I got this video out to you because I've had a few uh, questions about swirls. And I don't know, I guess I feel like my technique works for me, so I wanted to share it. Because sometimes I think we tend to overcomplicate things. Okay, so here I'm showing you the baked versions of all of the swirls that I made. Now, I made another uh, swirl that I didn't show myself making on camera. And it is actually one of my favorites. Um, up there you can see it's blue and white and clear, and it is Cernet Pearl Green and Cernet Pearl White. Two snakes of each wrapped around a ball of Pardo Translucent. I then, uh, you know, swirled it, compressed it, and then coated it in Magic Gloss and eventually Deep Shine around the edges, which I will show you in this video. I'll show you the coating process for these. These are all going to be uh, little ornaments. We have a small tree in our studio that I'm going to put them on. If you watch our Saturday live show, you saw me put them on the tree or show you these ornaments today. Okay, so now I've made a perimeter of Magic Gloss, and if you're a fan of Pandora, you've seen her do this several times on all different pieces. I've made a perimeter of my Magic Gloss, and you can see that ring around it and I have already cured that and now I'm filling it in. So I'm filling in with Magic Gloss to give this a nice shiny kind of doming um, uh, appearance and I want it to kind of magnify the, the transparency, transparency of the clay and also with the sparkles. So don't be afraid to touch your magic gloss to touch your deep shine a little bit. I actually like to touch it, even though I am goo phobic. I do like to touch these coatings and make sure that I've kind of spread it around enough that I've got it in the little crevices there. And then I hit it with my little torch to make sure that I get out the bubbles. All right, hitting it with the torch. Then I go ahead and I put it in my light to cure. So I use a UV light and cure it for a few minutes. You can leave it in there for several minutes if you like, but really it's pretty quick. Now I've taken it out of the light. I'm just showing you how it brings out that sparkle. And I think even though these are simple swirls, I really um, like the effect that was achieved. Um, I think they make pre really pretty ornaments. And I think you'll have a lot of fun making that. I know one thing, and that swirling is addictive. Like, <laughs> you will get addicted to swirling once you get the hang of it. Because it's just so fun to see that come into fruition. You, come, you know, you start making it, and then it becomes this beautiful thing. Um, here we have... Uh, a tiny Pandora sanding deck and I'm just showing you that sometimes you're going to get a little uh, over drip of your coating and sometimes you just want to get the rough edges off. Um, so I'm sanding this little guy and getting some of the over drip off. What happened <laughs> when I was making that one to get especially drippy was that Jolene was jumping on my back and she was ready to go and it was time to go and then I was trying to apply some magic gloss and it just went right over the edges. So I had like a little spill of magic gloss on my on my beads, on my ornaments before I uh, left for the day. And so they had cured in the light 
in there, a little bumpy around the edge, and I sand them on the sanding deck. Now, our sanding deck comes with like a little silicone mat underneath to keep it from moving all around when you sand, and it comes with an extra refill of the sanding pad itself so that you don't wear it all out and then not have anything. And now I'm showing you that I'm going to apply deep shine to the edges of my swirl. My swirly ornament. Because the magic glass doesn't really go over the edge very easily. It doesn't stay um, sort of suspended on the edge. It wants to either pull up or fall down. So that's where deep shine comes in. And it is quite compatible with magic gloss. So here I am coating the edges um, with uh, the deep shine, and then I'm going to go over briefly the top of the, the ornament as well, um, just to kind of make sure that it's sort of all uniformly, evenly coated with clear. And then uh, once I put that in the light and cure it, you'll see it gives it a pretty nice effect. Uh, Magic Gloss is newly formulated, and um, I think that you'll really love the new results that you get from it. Um, these swirls and um, little little ornaments and trees that I'm going to show you throughout this video were the first um, time I was using the new Deep Shine formula, and um, I just love it. I loved Deep Shine before, but I love it even more now. So I think you guys will too. I hope you guys will too. And let us know what you think. And I think it has slightly less of an odor, which kind of bummed me out because I really like the way the deep giant smells. I know I'm weird, but I did like it before. But it smells slightly less now, I think. And I like it either way. But I definitely like the results I got. It's just so even and it, qu and it cures so quickly. It's really pretty amazing. And you can even... Uh, cure this deep shine in the sunlight. Uh, you don't have to have a UV light, but UV light does make it a little bit faster. Um, here I'm showing you the gold leaf that I used um, for not only this swirl ornament, but also the little trees that you're going to see in the next segment. Um, let me see here. Uh, and I'm also showing you that I have coated these all with uh, Magic Gloss and Deep Shine. So I'm trying to bring out the sparkles. And as you can see, um, sometimes transparent clay has a placking effect. And I feel like it worked in my favor on that one. It looks like a galaxy behind it. There's our little candy. And as you can see, the... The coatings did bring out the glitter and the sparkle in both the glitter clay and the certain pearl. And finally, look at how cool that is. <laughs> I think that's turned out pretty fun. I am a fan of swirling. Here I'm showing you um, a effect that I got by using three different swirls and stacking them on top of each other. Now what I mean by that is when I initially made one, I made one with just transparent clay and just white glitter and white cernet pearl. And that's what I made the little snowman with. Then I went ahead and used, made a ball out of that and put green around it. And the green I used is cernet number one green mixed with cernet white pearl. And then I went ahead and made a swirl with that and made those little trees. Then I took that ball and took some white pearl, put some gold leaf on it, and uh, put it around a whole nother, the whole, the, the, the second ball that I made out of the second swirl, and then swirled and compressed that. So the final effect that I got has so many layers. <laughs> and that's what I made these final larger trees 
out of and um, the two little small trees that you see next to the one that I'm putting deep shine on they all have all the layers so if you look in from the side you can see all the different green and clear and pearl and glitter and they were so much fun to make and I used um, cutters from Ojoy Creations so I hope you'll visit her store and try those cutters out and what I wanted to show you with these is that you don't just have to make a swirl and then it just be a round thing. I've made so many different things with my swirls. I've made like these little earrings and ornaments. I've made headbands out of the beads that I've made with swirl veneers. I've made compacts. I've made air plant pots. I make all different things with my swirls because they're just so pretty and they're so fun to work with. And you can make you know, roll them into a veneer that you can cut out or make into any shape you want. So I hope you'll have a lot of fun with these. And I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please subscribe to Tiny Pandora Design Team.